Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the outro solo to The Tunnel of Love by Dire Straits. And what a cracking solo. This is Mark Knopfler at his finest. Probably one of the greatest guitar solos of all time, in my opinion. It's sensitive, it's powerful, it's beautiful, it's got great phrasing, it's got great techniques in it, fits the song perfectly. It's just like, it's got everything going on. It's quite a sticky one to learn because it's a bit long. So you probably want to write it out, tab it out for yourself. I'd love to give you one, but then I infringe all sorts of copyright stuff. Um, so a good idea, as I tell you about each phrase, will be to tab it out yourself. You can download free blank tab paper from my website if you haven't got any. Um, and just write it down. I find it really helpful to write the rhythms down as well. The rhythms are a little bit more complicated to, to write out if you're not familiar with learning to read and write rhythms, but it's definitely a skill that I'd recommend that you check out as well. I'm going to take it through just one phrase at a time and I will ex occasionally explain some alternative positions because when I transcribed it I think there's a chunk of it that I'm going to show you the way I think he plays it now but I wrote it out slightly different so occasionally I might twizzle my head and play it in a wrong position or whatever just because I've been practicing uh, in one way and then only this morning seen a video of him playing in another position I was like ah I have to move that now. Um, I'll do as best I can for doing like complete slow playthroughs and count along some stuff, but on a solo this long for me to be able to play it consistently well enough and be able to count along with it, which I find still challenging after all these years, I'm not sure that's going to happen. So it'll probably be in little chunks. I hope that's going to be okay for you. So let's get to a close up and check it out one lick at a time. So the first phrase, just to hammer on and flick off, the first finger is in the 10th fret of the second string. Second finger is going to hammer down on the 11th fret and then flick off. Just, you want to be quite delicate here. And one thing that you might find helps is that actually my thumb is resting on the third string and my second, my middle finger, driving finger, is on the thinner string. So my first finger is just playing that second string and it just keeps the noise down, the risk of strings ringing out. If I take away all of that muting and go, you can hear all of these other things are ringing out. So it's a good kind of habit to get into that, you know, my thumb is kind of laying down over all of those strings, resting on the third string, middle finger is resting on the thinner string, and it lets, particularly when you want it to be nice and quiet and delicate, you don't want extra noise ringing out. So it might be something to consider as you're going through the tune. It's coming, uh, this note, the final note, is coming on the on beat three. So we got one, two, and a three, four, one, two, three, four. Now this one, as opposed to this one, which is all delicate, this one's a little bit, got a bit more grunt to it. I use my third, second and third fingers to rest lightly on the middle two strings. First finger is on the eighth fret of the second string. And we're gonna use, with the picking hand, the thumb, first finger, and then the, uh, driving finger is going to play that second string and it wants to be quite powerful. Okay, they just it's not really a rhythm as long as that one's landing on beat three. It's what you want to think about rhythmically. Uh, make sure the note's quite short. It's not... You really want to stab out and hear the nice reverb kind of tailing out there. Next phrase. 10, 11, 10 on the second string, 12, 10, 12 on the third string. One, two, and three, and four, and one. One, two, and three, and four, and one. Again, making sure that I'm, you know, my thumb is still resting on those thinner strings, making sure they're nice and quiet. Don't want any noise ringing out here. I tend to use my first finger for both of the strings. So plucking just the second string, hammer on, flick off, pick, flick off, hammer on. But you could use your thumb there as well. You've got to feel this out. I, I don't know exactly what Mark does. I don't think probably Mark does know or care, really. As long as it sounds nice, that's going to be the key thing. You find what works best for you. The next phrase. Okay, so we got 10. 13, 10 on the second string. It's another hammer on and flick off. Then 11, 10, 12. This is part of a little B flat chord. Try it. One, two, and three, four is the rhythm. It seems a bit more separated. When he does it live, tends to let them ring out together and put a, 
little chord vibrato, which is a nice thing to check out if you've not tried putting vibrato on whole chords before. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, four. Okay, make sure you get that rhythm. Let's play those first few bars now, and I'll try and do a rhythm count for you as well. So, one, two, and a three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, and a three, four. Okay, next phrase. 10, 12 on the third string, 10 on the second string. Okay, then a little hammer on flick off again like we had at the beginning. Four and one, two and a three, four. One, two, three, four. Lots of rest. One, two, three and four. Okay, now this is eighth, uh, twelfth fret. This is one of those ones where I moved position. So I originally had it. That's kind of where I transcribed it, but I'm fairly sure now after doing a bit of research, it's here. Etc. So that's where I'm going to show it to you in, in this part of the neck. So occasionally I'm, because I'm looking at my tab here, which is in the wrong position and trying to play it where the tab isn't, which is a little bit confusing for me, but shouldn't be for you. So this phrase, we've got the 12th fret tone bend release, bend it back again, and add vibrato. 10, 11, 10 on the second string, 10, 12, 10, 12, again on the third string. Then 10, 11, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 13, 10, we've got that little phrase, the rhythm is slightly different now to crotchet triplet, 11, 10, 12, okay, let me just play it up to that point, actually no, I'll do the next phrase as well, okay, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, okay, second string, third string, and back to the second string. Let's get it up to that point. So, one, two, and a three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, four. One, two, four, and one, two, and a three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four and one, two and three and four and one, three and four and one, two, 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 one, two, three and four and one. Okay, that's kind of where it starts built. The track starts building up at that point. It's a little faster. That same up to that point. One, two, one. Lovely little phrase here. Tenth fret being covered on the second and third strings. Third finger going down on the twelfth fret. Then off. One and two and three, four. One, two. Three and four. One, two. Another little, just one of these bend and release things. At the thirteenth fret on the second string. Ten. 
10, 11, 10, 10 on the third string, 12, 12, 12, flick off to the 10, back to 12. 10th fret on the thinner string, 13th fret on the second string, that's the 10th fret to the 12th fret on the 4th string. Now we're starting to build it up even more. 10, 12, tone bend, 10 on the second string, tone bend, 10 on the second string, and then another tone bend, a slightly slower bend. It starts on beat two, that little phrase. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Interesting here, what's going on with that bend. So two, and three. So you actually hold this one and bend it up on beat three. One, two, and three, and four, and, but beat four, it's just instant bend. And then that last one, one and. Okay, after that hold, really, really kind of classic country phrase. But we're doing these bends. A little finger is going to sneak down there on the 13th fret of the second string. One and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Okay, this is kind of a tricky little one. Again, listening will be the answer all of the time here. One and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two three now uh, this next little phrase I was fairly sure it was here but I've, again I've seen some clips now where he's definitely going Can, it does, I don't think it really makes a big deal of difference, but anyway, I'll show you what the way he did it, not the way my ear hears it on the record. But 12th fret on the fourth string, then 9, 10, 12 on the third string. See, I think it slides up to that one. 3 and 4 and 1. Then we've got this little 10, 12, 10, slide back to 9. And then the, we go back to the 10th, but with the second finger. Then 9, 10, 9, flick off, slide back to 7. And now we're gonna, we've got this extra note here, which is the 8th fret on the 4th string. Then 7, 9, 7, slide back to 5. A tricky little phrase. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. It's the way to think with those little twiddles. They're sixteenth note triplets, is what they are. But if you just count the ands and try and do a little hammer on flick off on the end, I think that's the easiest way to count it. Again. Two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Finishing there on the fifth fret, first finger on beat one. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Yeah, another just it's not actually that difficult but to get the rhythm and the phrasing of that right it's a little bit more tricky one two and three and four and one and two 
and three and four and then we're into this little sixth phrase. Okay, let me take that little section again. Two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now we got this little sixth part. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one. Not sure about those last two notes. Could be the rhythm guitar player that's playing those, but seems to fit nicely to my ears anyway. So. Finishing there on the fifth fret with the first finger, we want to use second finger to do, come in and do a little slide up to the seventh fret. One and first finger, sixth fret on the thinner string. Then we play the two eighths on the strings one and three together. Then the eighth fret again, sliding up to the tenth fret. Play the tenth fret on the thinner string. Third string, thinner string. Now we drop back to first finger in the eighth fret and second finger in the ninth fret on strings one and three, and we play three, one, three, one. That's the string that we're going to play. And if you want to do those two tens on strings two and four on beat one of the following bar, that's where they would go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Four is the rhythm. A little bit odd rhythm that. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one. That's the halfway point of the solo. Okay, I'm going to do another slow playthrough right from the start of the tune up to this halfway point. Uh, I just noticed that I was actually missing a bar on previous playthroughs. After the very first three notes, there's another whole bar rest, which I wasn't putting in. I hadn't marked it on my chart. And I was like playing through again. Is there a rest there? Is there a rest there? Sometimes you'd, you'd write things out and then your ear kind of plays with your ear and your, your musical memory. Anyway, okay, I'm going to do a slow playthrough of the second half of that tune now. So hopefully uh, it'll all make a little bit of sense. Here we go. One, two, three, four. I hope you'll join me for part two of this lesson, which I'll film as soon as I can dump off the stuff off the memory cards, because the memory cards full on my camera, and then I'll film the second half. Hopefully it'll be in the very near future, maybe even available by the time you've finished watching this. Remember, all of these lessons will be linked over on the website. There'll be links to related lessons, the other parts, the rhythm part, the Mark Knopfler Techniques lessons that I've got as well. So do go and check that out. There'll be a link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you for much more very soon. You take care. Bye-bye.